All right, let's get started with our first article. It's about Nissan's new spark powertrain, which can reduce CO2 emissions by using a gas generator to power the electric vehicle. And this topic was suggested by none other than my own dad, John Mark Mitchell. So thanks, Dad, for being a part of a community and giving us a, just su- giving us a suggestion. Okay, so um, from what you're saying, it sounds like they're it, building a hybrid car, right? Like a Prius? Exactly. So it's similar to a Prius in that they are using both battery power and electric motors in addition with a gas-powered engine. But the big difference here is that you know, most hybrids, including the Prius, use both the batteries and the electric motors to drive the powertrain and also the gas mo- gas engine to power- drive the powertrain. Okay. Nissan is only letting the electric motors do the driving and only using the gas motor for the generator. And the way that this is important is they've basically been able to crack 50% thermal efficiency, whereas most internal combustion engines are below 40%. Toyota's the best right now in the market with the Prius, and they have about 40% thermal efficiency. So this Nissan Stark uh, powertrain is seems to be a breakthrough in efficiency as far as internal combustion engines go that are on All the right, market. All right, so I, I want to go back real quick, right? I remember there was an episode of The Office where Andy, one of the characters, drives a Prius, and they were talking about how as long as you go below 10 miles an hour, it's using the electric motors. And I'm assuming if you go higher, that's when the internal, I mean, internal combustion engine kicks in and takes over the powertrain. But what you're saying is that Nissan doesn't do that. Nissan's internal combustion engine is only used to charge the batteries, which then run the motors? Yeah, so they're using the gas okay. motor only as a generator, okay. which charges batteries, and that battery power is used to drive the electric motors at the wheels. All right, and um, the way they, they get to 50% thermal efficiency, right? Is it because they've constrained how the loads, like how, how much the internal combustion engine has to perform? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if you think about it, um, it's actually incredibly complex to make an engine, internal combustion engine for a car, because your car has to go between a wide range of speeds, you know, the revolutions per minute that the engine's Mm -hmm. spinning at, as well as the load, depending on whether you're going up or down a hill, or, you know, what gear you're on in the powertrain, all those different things, they've got a ton of levers to pull, the compression ratio, dilution, cooling, mechanical, pumping, you know, it's a lot of details we don't really have to go into, but basically at the end of the day, when you're building an internal combustion engine to drive the wheels, you end up with an engine that is pretty good across a wide range of speeds, but it's not great at any of them. What Nissan did is they chose one speed, one dedicated speed that they want this engine to operate at, and they tuned all those levers to be the most efficient level possible at that speed. And the reason they can only use that one speed is because all this engine's doing is spinning to power a generator, which charges the but batteries. But aren't there like um, performance issues that can arise from that? Let's say I'm driving my car, the Nissan, and for some reason I need peak out- output from the powertrain. What, wouldn't I expect the internal combustion engine to like readjust itself and keep up with that? Like, is there a way they're working around that issue? Well, they say this technology wouldn't have been possible in the past because of these issues you're talking about, where unless you have a huge battery pack, like what's in most of these battery electric vehicles, the battery can't supply enough power to the wheels to get you up that hill or to accelerate really fast on the highway. But they say now, due to increases in improvements in battery technology, they you know can actually have a small battery on there that has enough energy capacity in it that it can power these uh power every single motor at the wheels efficiently efficiently and you know you can operate in a function that um if i put the pedal to the metal i'm not concerned about how much power this ice engine can output into the battery um they actually say there's no way that you can consume more energy than this internal combustion engine generator can put out so in terms of feeling concerned about performance i don't think this is an issue anymore and that's actually thanks to improvements in battery technology not just internal combustion engines Okay, speaking of battery technology, I'm assuming they're doing this whole thing to, you know, be more carbon neutral or like reduce carbon emissions. How does this compare with just battery power electric vehicles? Okay, so this is where it gets really interesting. So we mentioned it's much more efficient than current internal combustion engines. That's great in terms of reducing emissions, but a lot of people are switching over to battery electric vehicles. You know, I think of Tesla, Rivian, a lot of huge names entering the market, even most legacy OEMs. I feel like um, I hear about a new Ford, electric GM. vehicle company like literally every every week. 
Every yeah. single week, they're making battery electric vehicles with the purpose of reducing emissions. That's great. But if you take into account the whole picture, the production of the battery, and also, you know, the energy that's being created to charge that battery, most of it's coming from non-renewable energy sources. So Toyota Spark powertrain, they project that this will actually have lower emissions if you take into account the total lifespan of the vehicle, lower emissions than a battery electric vehicle does today. Okay, that makes sense. And what's even better is they say as electric vehicles move forward towards using renewable energy sources for the electricity, they think that this spark system will be about even with that. And there will be there will be an inflection point where green electric vehicles eventually overtake these. But they say in the meantime, you know, between today and the day down the road where green power powers all of our electric vehicles, this is actually the way they think we should go instead of switching to batteries. See, right th- that makes a lot of sense to me. Like, this seems like such a thought-out implementation. And when you look at battery-powered electric vehicles, you also have the mining of of, of the materials required to make the batteries. There's a lot of concerns about the ethicality of it and how it's sourced and things like that. So that's an issue. Also, mining it causes damages to the environment that is not just CO2 emissions. So that's another issue. I feel like this approach will buy us some much needed time to figure out battery technology, to figure out renewable energy sources while reducing carbon emissions like significantly. But there's, then there's also the issue of like, you know, power stations, like to, to charge your electric vehicle, you need a power station. And although we have some infrastructure in the United States, I'm assuming that's not the same all over the world, but I'm willing to bet that there's petrol stations all over the world. Yeah. And, you know, Nissan's not just talking the talk, they're also walking the walk. This is part of their roadmap towards carbon neutrality in the future. Um, They just say that this is one stepping stone between, you know, purely internal combustion powered cars and going purely to battery electric vehicle cars. They say that this is a stepping stone in between those two that they're going to be doing over the next few years. That totally makes sense to me. Um I'm I'm personally happy to see at least one manufacturer focus on something other than battery powered electric vehicles. Again, like I, I feel like there's a new company popping up every single week. So this is refreshing to see. 